I'm Joy Funnel. In this video I'm going to show you how I prepare my enamels ready for wet laying onto polished silver pieces. Um, I'm going to cover how I grind them and wash them and uh, just get them ready for actually uh, laying onto the surface and working with. These are vitreous enamels, these are ground glass uh, with oxides in um, and they fire on in the kiln at a high temperature. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it useful. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I wash and grind enamels. Um, this is a packet of enamel powder. It's quite fine, uh, the grains in it, and um, that's how a lot of enamel comes these days, either in a, a little tub or in a little bag. Uh, in the past, you used to also get uh, lump enamel. You still can get that, but not so much. So generally these days, we start off with a powder. Uh, this is a Japanese one, and this is fairy pink, which is a really, really pale pink. Enamel powders are not what you see is what you get. Enamel is basically ground glass mixed with metal oxides that give it the colour. So it can vary enormously as to whether or not um, the colour is anything like the enamel, but you can never look at an enamel powder and think, oh, that's the colour I'm going to get because it doesn't work like that. So often a red enamel might be a white powder, for example. So you always need to test, test, test. But what I'm going to just show you here is how do I actually prepare, wash and grind my enamel. Now there are different methods of washing and grinding enamels and the method I'm going to show you is what works for me. It's not to say any other method is wrong. There are lots of different ways of, um, you know, there are definitely other ways. Some people sift all their enamels. I don't do that. This is the way I was taught. This works for me. That's all I'm saying. Um, so uh, you kind of have to decide, you know, um, what method you want to use. But this is how I prepare my enamels. This is how generally they're prepared in the UK as well. Um, in America, there's a lot more sifting. doesn't tend to really be sifted so much in the UK, I would, I would say so. So I'm going to show you what I do. So what equipment do we need to actually um, wash and grind and prepare enamels? First of all, you need a pestle and mortar. Um, you don't have to have a nice fancy one like I have, and this actually is quite a small one. Often people will use a bit bigger pestle and mortar than this. I tend to use a small one because I generally take it with me if I'm traveling. Uh, I like to have my own pestle and mortar with me. So I tend to take my own one with me. So, um, but any pestle and mortar is fine, except that it needs to be of the right material. And by that I mean we're looking for an unglazed uh, vitreous porcelain, so very hard material. You don't want a glaze on it because if you have a glaze on it as you grind with the enamel, you'll grind the glaze off and that'll go into your enamel and that will discolour it. Uh, you don't want a wooden one, that wouldn't stand up to the enamel powder at all. You don't want a soapstone one, because if you do that in a soapstone one, you'll find you've got a little heap of dust in the bottom of it if you do it in an empty one. You don't want a marble one because a marble one has lots of little fractures in the surface and the enamel powder would all get into that and that wouldn't be any good. So um, any size pestle and mortar you like, but you do want to have this nice smooth unglazed uh, porcelain type um, for actually using. And super, super important, health and safety. Enamel is glass. Do not use the same pestle and mortar that you, you, you use for your enamel uh, to grind your garlic in afterwards. Okay, so definitely no sharing with the kitchen, completely separate. Make sure. Other than that, we're going to be using ordinary tap water for most of the washing, and I've just got a bowl to rinse it out in. And the last two rinses that I'm going to do, I'm going to do in distilled water. Um, either distilled water or deionized water is fine. You could do the whole process in that, but that um, in this country, in the UK, it's not that cheap to buy. So I tend to just use ordinary tap water. And then my last two or three rinses, then I will do, um, I will do the uh, distilled water at the end.
So what we want to do is we want to put some enamel from our container into our uh, mortar ready for grinding. Now this is the only point where in this process you need to be careful because um, as you tip out there will be a little bit of dust comes up and you don't want to be breathing that dust so don't stand so that um, you're directly over it when this little bit of dust comes up but other than that we don't need to worry about using a mask or anything for this process. See I'm just tipping a little bit in, I'm staying a nice distance away from it and you don't need a huge amount for if you're doing jewellery either. Um, but because all the rest of this process is going to be done under water, you don't need to worry about um, wearing a mask or anything like that. And you can see I've just got quite a smallish amount of enamel in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the washing and grinding process. Okay, so we've got a small amount of enamel in our mortar and then I'm going to add a bit of water. And I'm just going to add a little bit like that. I'm not going to fill it right up because if I add lots and lots of water, when I start grinding, the water's going to slosh all over everywhere and we don't want that. So we just want a small amount. You can see quite a small amount in the bottom there um, to enable me to um, actually grind the enamel. And I can just see a little hair on the surface there. So I'm just going to take that off. There we go. Um, so why are we washing and grinding? Um, well, I always refer to it as washing and grinding. What I'm really doing is grinding and then rinsing. But I've always called it washing and grinding, so I shall keep calling it washing and grinding. But the first thing we do is we grind. And we grind to make the enamel grains rounder, smoother on the edges, because they're kind of like sharp sand to start with. So they're going to be rounder, smoother on the edges, and a more even size all the way through. And then what we do is we rinse and in rinsing um, we take away all the really really fine powdery stuff that's in there which is called the fines um, and they can affect the clarity of our transparent enamel because all the enamels I work with are transparent enamels um, and they can affect the clarity of it so that we don't get such a nice clear colour. So we want to clean all of that out so we've got really nice clear enamel that the light can go through the transparent enamel, hit the silver behind and reflect back and look really, really beautiful. So, um, so first of all, we're doing this grinding process and um, as we grind, as I say, we're going to make the grains a little bit smaller. So if you think about if you had a container full of, um, say, footballs and between each football would be quite a, a big air gap. If you grind it down and it's full of ping pong balls, we're not going to go that far, but it's just an example. Um, all the little air gaps are going to be much, much smaller. And this means when we lay our enamel onto the surface, it can kind of lay together much better with smaller air gaps. And that in itself is going to help us try to avoid getting any air bubbles or anything. So that's the reason why we're doing it, um, is, is to get um, enamel that lays better and the grains are more even in size and a bit smoother. So I've got my enamel in the mortar, I've got my water, now I'm going to go in with my pestle. And to start with, I'm hoping you can really hear that, it sounds super gritty, yeah, sort of, and it feels really gritty. Obviously you can't feel, you're going to have to imagine this bit a little bit. If you've been on a workshop with me, you'll know that I actually pass it around normally so you can feel it, but you can very much hear it. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep grinding until it sounds a bit smoother and feels a bit smoother. But we don't want to grind so far that it's so fine that we wash it all away and we've got no enamel left because that would defeat the point of the whole thing. So I'm going to start grinding. And when I start grinding, I stay pretty much right in the centre of the, um, the mortar. Because if I grind up round here, round these edges, the enamel isn't there and I just slosh water around. So I stay right in the centre there and as it pushes the enamel grains around they all fall back into the centre all the while. And I'm just going to keep grinding until I get that sort of bit smoother sound. You can already, I think, really hear a bit of a difference there. So we just keep doing this until we think we're ground fine enough that we want it. And it is going to be experience as you wash and grind enamels and start using them. When you start laying them on the surface, um, you'll, you'll soon realise some of them feel a lot coarser than others. And 
and you'll you'll find out like what works best for you and and enamels can vary as well so some can be grittier to start with um, than others and um, you know you make a little note oh next time I need to grind that one a bit more or a bit less and then and then you'll sort of know know where you are and that's already feeling pretty nice actually so now if I just I think hopefully you can really hear a difference there once you've got it to the point where um, you've got it ground as far as you want you take the pestle out put it to one side because you're not going to use that again so now what we want to do is we want to go on to the rinsing and what I normally do is on this first one I normally add a little bit more water to start with and then I let it start to settle a little bit if I pour the water off immediately, I would just be pouring away all the enamel that was suspended in the um, in the surf um, in the, in the water there. So we want to just let the bigger grains just settle down a little bit, um, and then what we can do is we can then pour away the water off the top. And you can see at the moment this is looking really quite murky. You can't really see any enamel down there at all under the water. And what we're now going to do is we're going to start rinsing until that water is completely clear over the enamel um, and we've got and then we'll do our last two rinses with distilled so having let it settle a little bit um, you could let it settle slightly longer than this but I'm just now going to start pour it off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this bowl in so that hopefully let me just move the jug out a little bit bring the bowl in a little bit um, and then hopefully you're going to be able to see as I go doing this you're going to be able to start to see the difference so I pour really, really carefully because I don't want to pour all that good enamel away. I just want to pour away the cloudy stuff. Some people would filter this and keep it um, so that the very, very fine stuff, you could maybe use it for um, counter enameling and that sort of thing. I don't really have a use for it, so I tend to just discard the, uh, the fine stuff that I wash away. If you are doing this in your kitchen, in your kitchen sink then you need to be scrupulous afterwards at cleaning up because you do not want glass powder in your food and can you see as I'm going down how there is the enamel that we're after that pink enamel and this water is still quite murky so I'm just gonna just gonna support that because I'm pouring off at a little bit of a weird angle there we go and there's our enamel and you can kind of see a little bit of cloudiness still up on that top surface I know it's a little bit reflective sorry about that um, and then I'm going to pour in a bit more water. I'm going to let it settle. And I'm going to do it again. And again, and again, and again, and again. And I'm going to keep doing that until it's clear. So I'm just going to do two or three on here so you can start to see a difference. Um, and then I'll probably stop. And the amount of times that you have to rinse is, again, going to vary from enamel to enamel. Some will be a lot, lot quicker than others. So I can already see, I'm not sure how easily you can, but I can actually already see that that water pouring off this time is a lot clearer than the previous one. So I'm just gently, gently going. You, again, you can start to see down there, I hope. Um, you can start to see the pink in the bottom. So just pouring off a little bit more. Careful, 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 careful. Making sure that we're only pouring away water and not the enamel. If you start to see a great streak of colour in your bowl or down your sink or whatever, you've probably got a little bit too gung-ho and gone a bit too fast. So just a little bit of patience. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process as it starts to clear. Um, it used to be said that you had to wash and grind enamels fresh every day. And yeah, that actually put me off enamelling for quite a long time because... Yeah, the very idea of washing and grinding, which I did used to do, was just like, oh, can I even be bothered to enamel? No, I don't think I can. Um, and then sort of more and more with improvement in, I, I guess, water quality and everything else. But these days we can we can do our um, washing and grinding and then save our enamel off into a little tub. And I keep mine just um, out of the sun in a in a not in the dark, but in a, a darker area, making sure no sunlight on them and it's not too hot. And I just keep them in a little tub and I'll show you the little tub at the end that I'm going to put it into. Um, and I just put it into a little tub and um, I keep them and they keep for quite a long time. But sometimes um, you may find that uh, 
they dry out and we just add a bit more distilled water. So can we see now a little bit, I hope, we can start to see through that water to the enamel. It's still murky, but it's a lot, lot clearer than it was, as you can see by what's in the bowl. So there's a little bit more, drain it off. There's our nice pink enamel again. Just add a little bit more. And sometimes I just kind of just swirl it around a little bit because it gives an edge to the enamel in the bottom of the mortar, which is kind of a bit easier to see. But I think if I just turn that, I hope... I'm kind of hoping I might just turn some lights off, see if we can see that a little bit better. Let's just try it without the lights. Oh yeah, and then just another one glares all over it instead. That wasn't a big success, was it? Let's see if I can just... Okay, there we go. Now you can kind of see the enamel down in the bottom there. So I'm just going to pour that off. Pour in the water off again. And I'm just going to keep doing that until it's completely clear. So I'm going to do two or three more rinses. So, um, and then um, I'm going to show you how it is when it's nice and clear. So my enamel's looking was looking quite nice and clear. The water above it was nice and clear. So my last two um, rinses, I'm going to use, um, this is actually uh, battery water, um, so uh, which is demineralized water. So as I said, demineral, demineralized, I can't even say it, or deionized water is absolutely fine. Um, deionized is actually slightly purer than demineralized, I believe. Um, so, but either is fine, battery water from the garage, from the chemist, whatever. Some places are a lot more expensive than others, so, so do have a little look around and ju just check the different names um, and, and try not to spend the earth. And then we're just going to do our last two or three rinses in this. So I'm going to do one rinse, being careful that I don't lose my enamel. Uh, a second little rinse, let's just add a little bit more into there. There we go, and again, just swirl it around a little bit, get that nice edge so you can see it, and it's nice and clear. Sometimes this does bring up a little bit more sort of cloudiness, so, you know, just, just make sure it's nice and clear again. Um, so I'm just going to tip that one off. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit more, and this time I'm going to just add a tiny bit. And what I want to do is I want to move it over into my little storage tub. And I've got just a little plastic tub. I've always used these little um, tubs for putting my enamel into. I'm just going to pop this down because I've realised I've got them in the wrong hands. So I'm going to change hands now. So what I do when I get this far is now I start to swill that last little bit of water around with the enamel and then it kind of like suspends the enamel up into the water and then you can quickly tip off oh didn't go quick enough so i'll do that again see it doesn't always go perfectly um tip that back in again the uh, water and just swill it around and then straight in there we go that's better you won't get all of it each time um but the idea is to just get get it in and let that let that settle and then the um, excess water on the top, you can tip back in again, swill it around again, pick it up. You don't want to waste any enamel. It's not the cheapest thing, um, but it will last you a very long time when you buy a pack. So again, just letting it settle, pouring some of that excess water back in there and tipping it out again until we're about clear. There is even, I could even do that again, but uh, just to... Um, to get it in and then what I'd do is I'd tip off a little bit of the water because there's a lot making sure it's still covered and just clip it down and then label up the little lid uh, with the enamel so you know what it is and that's how I prepare my enamels.